Awesome. All right, want to get started soon? Sweet. All right. Welcome, live stream people. If you can also give me some emojis so I know you guys hear my audio as well, that'd be great. I'm gonna give it a minute or two. Welcome everybody in. Emojis on the live stream if you can hear us loud and clear. Spam that chat with some emojis. Awesome. Again, we're going to give everyone a chance to come in, so we'll wait a little bit. For those of you on the, on the live stream, if you want to attend Altspace, Altspace is a software that you can log into on your desktop or through virtual reality. That is what is currently being displayed on your screen. If you want to join, uh, the Code is VUP636 once you enter Altspace. You can also click on the link that's been provided in the chat. It should also be provided down in the description soon. Tony has just provided a HTTPS link uh, that goes to attending in VR. You can come and join us if you wish. Awesome. All right, we'll give it another minute. I think we'll get started. Yeah, I think we should be able to manage in one room today, so I don't think we have to do two, which is nice. Um, and I think we might be good to go. Okay, uh, I think I'm going to start us off. Uh, we might have some people joining in as we go through today's lesson. So this is our first class for the introduction to 3D modeling with Blender course. Uh, this is a rerun of that first class. We had another run this Sunday where we held the same class. Uh, we're doing one this Wednesday to allow people that weren't able to attend Sundays another chance to attend. I know we had some issue on the live stream. For those that were attending on the live stream, uh, we're cut out short. We want to run the full session to give everyone a chance to see it fully um, for that first class. So uh, my name is Nicholas Barone. I am the uh, CEO and founder of Universe. We teach uh, VR development courses uh, and now 3D modeling courses uh, in the metaverse. Uh, our courses are a bit different than the ones you've probably seen before. We don't teach our courses through asynchronous video uh, or Zoom only. Uh, we augment our courses with live classes here in the metaverse. So you can attend our classes that we do in the metaverse. I know a lot of you guys are attending on live stream today, which is completely fine. All our classes are available to watch through live stream as well for that for those that's more convenient to. But uh, you also have the option to attend all our classes in the metaverse as well um, using the Altspace app, which you can access on your computer, whether that be a Windows or Mac computer, as well as a VR headset. Um, so that's a little bit about us. Uh, we've been teaching in the metaverse for over two years. Uh, right now, our, traditionally, our, our bread and butter has been teaching VR development. Um, so we have four courses in our pipeline for that program, uh, Introduction to Unity and C-Sharp Programming, VR World and Advanced Unity Development, VR App Development, and VR App Publishing. Uh, we're launching a new course, uh, which Jeff is going to be leading uh, as the instructor for the course. Uh, and that course is teaching 3D modeling with Blender. I'm just going to be giving kind of some overview stuff at the beginning. I'm going to hand it off to your instructor, Jeff. He's going to take you through the content today, and it's going to be your main touch point going forward with the course. Um, awesome. Okay. Is everyone clear on that? Emojis? Everyone hearing me okay? Emojis, guys? Let me check the live stream. All right, sweet. Looks like everyone's hearing me good as well. Uh, let's see, live stream people. Okay, 
Awesome. So uh, the way today is going to be structured is we're going to go through a short uh, hall operation lesson at the beginning, just kind of explaining uh, who we are, what we do. I know for some of you that attended our VR development workshops, this is going to be a little bit of a repeat um, because you guys know how our courses are structured. Uh, we like to do this for about the first eight minutes just to show the new students uh, what our kind of policies are in terms of uh, being able to take the course multiple times, in terms of how the assignments are structured and how teaching in Altspace actually works, uh, and then also in terms of time commitment um, and other things. So we're going to have that short kind of uh, hall abordation lesson to play at the beginning, and then we're going to go into uh, some Q&A. We'll be showing some video today, just going over simple Blender installation and a few tidbits on UI slash UX for Blender. Uh, this is going to be one of the few sessions uh, where we actually show any video here in Altspace. Usually it's through 3D animations or through our quiz system. The reason why we're doing this today is because you guys are all newbies. Uh, so this is your first time you know, coming into the class. So uh, there's no expectations in terms of what type of knowledge you need for this. So we want to give you a quick overview in terms of information and then do some assessment based on that afterwards to kind of see what you guys learn as well. Um, after that, we'll do some Q&A uh, and then we'll go into a breakout world where you'll be able to network with other students in the class and also ask Jeff questions on the course on Blender and whatever else you find um, interesting. So that's uh, kind of the structure for today. If you have questions, there's a raise hand button in the bottom right. We love helping you guys out with questions. So uh, feel free to ask those and we'll get to it at according Q&A times. And then if you're on the live stream, ask your questions there. Uh, we have instructors. Uh, Jeff is gonna be monitoring that as well uh, to help with any questions you guys have over there. Uh, something I do wanna mention is this class is being live streamed to YouTube. So that also means it's being fully recorded. We're going to be distributing the recording to everyone afterwards, but in order to do that, you need to have an email to send the recording to. So if you haven't done so already, uh, make sure if you're in Altspace to click on the link above, this little click enter the raffle button and enter your email address. If you're on the live stream, click on the link that Tony is going to post in the live chat and also in the video description. All right, so we'll give everyone a second to do that. And then Tony, yeah, go ahead and post it in the live chat as well as video description. Um, you guys will get the recording from today and also you're going to be entered into a raffle for today where we're going to be giving away that introduction to uh, 3D modeling course for free to one person uh, that enters the information. Now, if we do call your name, you have to be present in order to claim the prize. So if we call your name and you win the course, but you're not here to claim it, we're going to give it to the next person. So make sure to stay um, till the end. So if you do win, be able to claim the prize or else we're going to have to give it to the next person in the raffle. Awesome. I'll give everyone a chance to do that. Uh, also, you'll get the recording, entry into the raffle, and you'll be invited to our Google Classroom for the class, which has some info on the course syllabus, which gives you kind of a week-by-week -week breakdown uh, for the course. Also, uh, just gives you more information about the structure. Uh, and then you'll also be able to see week one materials and assignments as well. Okay. All right, so I'll give everyone a second to do that. Again, this is a repeat of this Sunday class. Uh, we're doing this to make sure everyone has a chance to attend and see it fully because we did have issues with the live stream last time. Okay, so I'm just going to give you a second for everyone to do that. All right, and we are not assuming previous experience coming into the course. Um, so you don't need to have previous experience 3D modeling. Um, or previous experience programming or anything of the like. Uh, you do have to be 13 years or older, though, in order to take the course, just to be uh, in compliance with the platforms we use. So that is something to note, 13 years or older. But you don't have to have any professional experience with 3D modeling. Um, that's what we're here to help. Okay, cool. Hopefully, is everyone did that? Let me just check. Uh, awesome. Oh yeah, Jeff, did you want to add anything there? Uh, do we have any questions in the live stream or any questions here on Altspace? I'll dismiss some, I'll dismiss the hand raises and if you have a question, feel free to raise your hand. Looks like we are good. Uh, we do have a question on the live stream. Will you receive the recording if you are already part of the Google Classroom? Yes. Uh, make sure, even if you signed up last time or you know, you're on the Google Classroom already, 
you need to put your information so we can see who is here today. We're going to be sending it according to the people that are here. So um, make sure to enter your enter information, not only for getting the recording, but also entrance to the raffle. So again, we're going to be sending the recording to the people that enter their email above. Um, that's also how we're going to be able to validate who's actually here for the raffle. So uh, no matter if you signed up through Eventbrite or you got the calendar invite, uh, if you could re-enter your information, if you already done so, or if you haven't done so, into the button above or on the live stream link, that just helps us keep track of everybody, um, and then also figure out who is eligible for the raffle for today. Alt space code, if you are not aware, is VUP636. All right. Um, Okay, sweet. Uh, Jeff, did you want to add anything before I go into the uh, the projection? Not at all. Let's go ahead and do it. All right, sweet. Okay, so for the people in alt space, oh, I wanted to do a quick uh, breakout, a uh, little um, uh, icebreaker thing. So I'm gonna bring up my world again. If you guys were here last time, you saw it as well. Uh, so if you're on the live stream, drop where you're tuning in from in the live chat. Uh, for the people here in alt space, uh, feel free to. Where you're tuning in from again, we're not using this data for anything other than just putting onto this cool globe thing. Um, just kind of cool to see where everyone's coming from. Awesome, okay. Let's see. So, we have one person in the UK, James. Thanks for joining us. One person, Renee, in uh, looks like Brazil, uh, and then a bunch of people in the US. So, we have people in California, looks like some people. Not in Florida. So a lot of people in New York City. Looks like some in Canada and Toronto, Michigan, uh, Vancouver. Uh, cool. Let's see where the live stream people are. London, California, Maine, Atlanta, Philippines, Venice, North Carolina, Naples. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, just a cool thing. You know, we could be all from different places across the globe and still be able to come together for class. Um, so. One of the cool things we'd like to see uh, and do a little bit of icebreaker before we jump into things. So I'm going to take this off for now. Okay. All right. So quick briefer for the people here in alt space. When this starts playing, you'll see a full body projection of myself over here. And then you'll see some animations on the right-hand side or your left-hand side. When it starts playing, you're going to notice a freeze frame about three to five seconds. Don't take off your headset or exit out of the app. It's basically loading in the assets for the animation. So make sure to just wait, let it happen for about three to five seconds. It will load and start playing. And when it does start playing, give me some emojis so I know you guys are seeing it. Okay, is everybody clear on that? Emojis, guys? Emojis. Awesome. Okay, so hopefully everyone's clear on that. I do want to make an announcement. Everyone's going to be invited to the Google Classroom uh, for the class. The week one learning materials out and the week one assignment, so you can get started on that. Um, and the deadline, we extended the deadline for enrollment to Friday. Okay, so Friday, this Friday is when you need to enroll in the course. Uh, that's just because we wanted to do this Wednesday repeat. We extended it from Wednesday to Friday. So when what Friday is the enrollment deadline in order to enroll in the course and then be able to attend the next class on Sunday and the rest of the 11-week course. Uh, but everyone's going to be invited to the Google Classroom that attended today, which, again, you'll be able to see the syllabus, uh, the week one learning material, week one assignments. And please, you know, message us on email or on the Google Classroom with any questions. We're going to be releasing the Discord for the class after the enrollment deadline so we can get an official student roster. And that's where you guys will get access to uh, the course Discord where we do chats and um, post questions and whatnot. So that will be released after Friday. Just makes it easier for us to kind of keep track on who should be there and who shouldn't. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and play it. I want you guys to give me some emojis when you see it. And let's go ahead and take a look in three, two, one. Hello, everyone. I'm back in my real life form. If you're able to hear and see me, if you could throw some emojis, if you're in alt space or comment, if you're on a live stream, that would be much appreciated. That way I know you're able to hear and see me. Okay. I'm going to give everyone a little bit to do that. Okay. Awesome. Now all of our courses run as follows. One, we meet once a week live in VR to teach and assess you on what you've learned and built. During the week, you have videos you need to watch and assignments you need to do. And then during our weekend live classes, we go through what you learned and test you. Two, all of our sessions you can attend either live in VR or on your computer through Altspace VR or through our YouTube live stream. 
so you don't need a VR headset in order to attend our live meetups. All of our live classes are fully recorded and distributed to you in case you missed a class or want to review anything we went over. 3. During our live classes, we go through our self-produced database of over 80 3D experiences which demonstrate and explain the 3D concepts you're learning. 4. We have instructor-led open office hours each week to help you with any questions you have or any troubles you're having with your coursework. 5. You have access to our class Discord where you can get immediate help at almost any hour of the day as long as us instructors are not asleep. Contrary to what our students think, we actually do have a bedtime. 6. You have the option to get weekly one-on-one -on -one hour-long mentorship and support sessions from one of our instructors or experts. You can use this time to get help with your personal project or your course assignments. 7. In total, you can expect about 6 to 8 hours of work per week. This course is meant to be a part-time commitment that you can succeed in while working a job or going to school. And lastly, but very importantly, we offer a unique policy where if you enroll in one of our courses once, it is free for you to take as many times as you like forever. So if you fall behind and can't complete the run you're currently in, or even if you just want to go back and review, you can take any future run of the course completely free, no questions asked. That is something that we offer that we haven't seen offered at other live programs. On that same note, all of our class material, including class recordings, assignments, our class discord, and more, will forever be available to you. Because of how our courses are set up, we've seen a four times higher completion rate than traditional online courses. And you can see why from our student responses. 87% of students said our course was significantly better or better than an online course. 85% of students said it was much easier or easier to stay motivated. And 90% of students said our 3D experiences were very helpful or helpful to their learning. Whenever you enroll in any of our courses, you get access to our universe community. You get access to our free universe workshops, where we've gone over how to make photospheres and 3D hemispheres, alumni interviews, and more. You also get access to our universe socials, where we explore VR apps and games together. As I mentioned before, relationship building is one of our best value propositions. Because of this, we put a lot of effort into connecting you with your peers to make friendships and professional connections. That relationship building is all made easier due to the fact that we hold our events and socials in Altspace VR which unlike traditional video chat services like Zoom, allows you to interact like you would in real life in a 3D immersive environment. If you try and find an equivalent live 3D modeling course using something like Zoom for meetings, the price will range between four to $12,000. We are charging $799, which is between five to 15 times less expensive. The reason we're charging way below market value is because our business model is not to have a few students with a lot of disposable income take our courses, our business model is to drastically lower the cost so that we can have a lot of more students who have a strong interest in becoming a VR developer. Now we also offer one-on-one -on -one mentoring packages to supplement our courses as well. This is for those students who want an individual expert guidance from one of our instructors to help them with their personal project or coursework. These occur during hour-long private meetings at a time during the week that works for you. All right. Okay, all right. Emojis, if that played well for you guys, everyone is able to see that, emojis. Awesome, so that was kind of a quick briefing on how the courses are structured. Again, some of our uh, students that have joined us before should recognize some of that information, but this is really for the new students. Um, so next steps for us is gonna be going over the video and I'm gonna be handing it over to Jeff for the rest of the class. Um, but Jeff, do you want to take some some questions first, maybe from the audience before we jump into the Blender video? Absolutely. Raise your hand if you have any questions so far. Remember, it's the little uh, icon in the bottom right hand corner. It should say raise hand. All right. I don't see anything on YouTube, nor do I see anything here in Alt Space. One quick question that I did receive earlier was, uh, when can I receive the Discord link? After you, Nick. Oh, um, oh, Discord link, yeah. So that is gonna be given after uh, Friday. So Discord is gonna be given to the uh, final student roster. 
So for now, everyone's going to be invited to the Google Classroom with some uh, information on the course, like the course syllabus, week one learning materials, and assignment. But the Discord will be given to the final course roster, which will happen on Saturday after the Friday enrollment deadline. Uh, it just makes it a lot easier for us to keep track of who's an enrolled student and who's not if we just give it after that. So expect that on Saturday. Thank you. I'll step off the stage. Uh, some, okay, so does everyone see um, like kind of some emojis back here? Uh, emojis, if you see emojis. Nice. Okay, so again, we're going to be going through um, two videos today. Uh, one going over installation, one going over UX UI. Should be about uh, 13 minutes in total. Uh, I upped the volume from last time because I heard that was a common complaint. So hopefully uh, that should be better this time around. Um, what I want to mention, do not follow along the steps as you watch this video. So you want to watch the video, understand the steps that are going that you're going through. We're going to test you based on what you learn. And then we have these videos on the Google Classroom afterwards for you to go through and follow step by step. For, for this first kind of walkthrough, you want to watch the videos, understand what's going through, what's going on, ask any questions you might have about the process, and then address them here. And we'll also do a test. And don't try and follow along with your computer. Uh, right now, we're going to have these videos up on the classroom, and that's when you want to follow it afterward. Um, One quick thing, uh, this video, this introduction video that we're going to be showing uh, to start off with is specific to Plunder, in, uh, showing off the installation and uh, how you can access it. Uh, just please be aware that it is kind of an extensive video. We're just making sure that everybody has the same version as a result. That's it. Thank you so much. Awesome. Okay. Emoji is when it starts playing for everybody. And uh, yep, let's go and take a look. I'll see you guys in a bit. Welcome to Universe's introduction to modeling with Blender. My name is Jeff Miller. I'm an instructor with Universe and have been providing workshops, classes, and general instructionals with Universe for about a year and a half. To provide a bit of background on me, the past 10 years of my career have involved working as a 3D modeler, texture artist, VR, AR developer, technical artist, and pipeline developer, with many companies ranging from Nissan Automotive to multiple freelance game projects and independent projects to Nike Shoes. With me is Tony, who will be assisting and providing some mentoring. Over the years, I've produced a number of assets with multiple 3D softwares. My skill sets are derived from Autodesk Maya, which is the bread and butter for game development and movie development, as well as commercial development. I also have a experience. <clears throat> I also have experience modeling tasks in Autodesk 3ds Max, AutoCAD. AutoCAD Architecture, Autodesk Alias, 3D Excite Delta Gen, Google SketchUp, Houdini, Moto, ZBrush, Autodesk Mudbox, and Blender. So let's talk about Blender. Blender is a 3D software that operates with polygons. You can do a wide range of tasks with it, including but not limited to 3D modeling, animation, texturing, rendering, and much, much more. We will talk about Blender more in the next session, but for now, we will be talking about how to access it. Now let us talk about how you can access Blender. You have one of three ways of downloading Blender and installing it on your device. If you're using Windows, Macintosh, or Linux, Blender is available for you regardless. It is an open source and free software, which means that you have an incredibly easy time downloading and installing it to whichever device you wish. The only thing it is not available for are mobile devices, though technically, if you know how to program, you can compile it for said mobile devices. So. What are the three ways of downloading Blender? You have Steam, Microsoft Store, 
and via the old-fashioned way of downloading and installing it from an online website. Let's start with the first version. If you are running a Windows device, that is Windows 8.1 or greater, you can open up the Microsoft Store. At the top, you will type in Blender. Here, you have the ability to download Blender as it is, or you can download Blender 2.93 LTS, which is actually the one we wish to install. Blender 2.93 LTS is Blender 2.93 long-term service. This means Blender under this version will constantly receive new and lifetime updates. Long-term service or lifetime service is actually what it stands for. So here you can go to the top right corner and click get if that is available to you. If you have gotten this before and uninstalled it, you will have an install button located here. Next, you will want to click Install. And now, Blender has been installed on my device. From here, I can click Open. And as you can see, it has downloaded and installed Blender and that is now available for me to use. Now, if you do not have a Windows device, you can install it through Steam if you have Steam downloaded. I will not walk you through the process of downloading Steam, but I will walk you through the process of getting it from Steam. So if we go to Store, Featured, we go to Search, we can look up Blender, and it will state that it is free. Down below, you will have a button here that says Free. This is the button that you would want to click to download Blender. Upon doing so, it will ask you if you'd like to install it. At this point, click Cancel. Instead, go up to Library and navigate to Blender in your list of favorites or in your categorized list of all possible programs you can download. From here, what you will do is right click and go to properties. When you go to properties, you will be met with a new menu that says general, updates, betas, and controller. If you click on beta, click the drop down, which it will state none, and navigate down to 2.93 stable LTS. At this point, when you close this menu, it should now say Blender 2.93. At this point, you can click Install. It will ask if you'd like to install it under a particular location. For me, C drive is perfectly fine. Steam will then handle the download and updates Once Steam has downloaded and installed Blender, you will be able to see that it is available for launch. Launching Blender from Steam is simple. And now Blender is installed and ready to use. The next and final option for downloading Blender is by navigating to the website. So when you go to blender.org slash download, you will be met with a page that allows you to download Blender 3.0.1. This is not to the version that we want. Instead, down below you will see looking for Blender LTS. This is where we wish to go. By clicking on that, we have the options of Blender 2.93 LTS or 2.83 LTS. On the left hand side, we will click Blender 2.93 LTS. 
Here we will be met with the long-term support availabilities, which are Windows Store, Steam, and Snap if you use Linux. There are other ways of downloading it on Linux as well, but for the sake of brevity, we are only going to be talking about these first two options and the downloads that are down below. Underneath the change log, you will see a variety of long-term service or long-term support releases that you are able to download. The most recent one is 2.93.8. Here we can download Linux version, Mac OS Intel version, Mac OS Apple Silicon version, the Windows installer, or the Windows Portable. The Windows Portable can be installed onto a USB drive and taken around wherever you need. For Windows devices, you would want most likely to get the installer. For Apple, if you have an Apple Silicon chip, you will want to download this one. And if you are running Apple Intel, you will want to download this one. For me, I will download the Windows installer. In the bottom left-hand corner, Blender will be downloaded on Chrome. Once downloaded, you will be able to launch your executable, accept the terms in the license agreement. After clicking Next, you will have the ability to designate a new location for downloading and installing Blender, and you will have the ability to designate which kinds of features you wish to have. By default, keeping everything installed is fine. Installing it in the main program files, Blender Foundation, Blender 2.93 is quite fine. If you're running Macintosh, you will need to drag and drop it into your application's prompt. After clicking Next and then clicking Install, the installer will then walk through copying new files into its proper location and allowing you to launch Blender after it is done installing. After you click Finish, Blender should be available for you to launch. And as you can see, Blender is up and running. We recommend using Steam to download and receive continued Blender updates as it is the most flexible and malleable installer location. And that is it for this video. I will see you in class. All right, emojis, did that stop playing for you? Awesome. <clears throat>Do we have uh, any questions so far? And uh, if not, we can begin on the next video. Welcome to your first. All right, looks like Welcome. we can begin. Welcome to your first assignment in Blender. The first assignment in Blender that you will be doing is populating the scene, saving a Blend file, exporting a file of either FBX or OBJ, or both, submitting them on the Google Classroom, and that's essentially it. I will award bonus points if you add a material to the object, and also if you add multiple objects to your scene and add materials for each one. If you want to add textures to those materials, that will also give you a few extra points. So. Without further ado, let's take a look at how to do this. 
No doubt you have already seen some of the other videos I've created, but in the case you haven't, this is the short and sweet version. In the top, you'll want to click on the modeling tab. After clicking on the modeling tab, what you will want to do is go down to add mesh and add your specific object into the scene. Now, for the sake of clarity, in the bottom left-hand corner, from here on out, I will have a little icon showing my mouse and the keys that I'm clicking on my keyboard. So, after I've added this cube, you will see that you can actually modify it, and you can add materials by the key that's on the right-hand side. There's a little material properties panel that you can add materials to. Without giving too much away, because I do want you to experience this and play around, I'm just showing you the location of that, but not actually diving into how to create a material. We'll cover that at a later section. In terms of what you have here, the next thing you will want to do is go up to File, Export. You have a few different options there, and File, Save. When you save your file, you can save it as a .blend file. So both or all three of those files that you will make are going to be submitted to the classroom. And once you've done that, submit your files, mark it as complete, and then you can begin working on the next project. That's it. All right, emojis. Thank you. Oh, Nicholas, you want to come up on stage? Yeah, okay. So I think we're going to move on into our question piece of today. So I'm going to bring up the um, uh, question system right here. Uh, if, any questions on that so far? Again, if you have questions, press the raise hand button if you're in alt space. If you're on the live stream, drop your questions on the live chat. Uh, so I'm going to bring up the quiz in the meantime. Now, regarding the quiz, not all of the questions will have been gone over in some of the videos or some of the videos that we've just watched. However, these questions are not actually graded. They are here for learning purposes. So if you get a question wrong, do not feel bad at all. This is just here as a way to help you garner new information quickly. All right. And for people on the live stream, Tony is going to post a link in the live chat uh, and also in the video description for you guys to follow along. It's a quizzes link. Open it in a new tab by right clicking on the link and press open a new tab and you could follow along with us. So Tony's going to get that out. Also, uh, I saw a question in the live chat asking about the recording. Maybe you came a little bit late um, and also access to Google Classroom. If you haven't already entered your email above, uh, please do so, or in the link in the live chat that Tony will also post. It's also in the video description. We're going to be giving the recording as long as you enter your information. Also enter you into the raffle today. We're going to be giving away the introduction to Unity, uh, sorry, introduction to 3D modeling with Blender course uh, for free to one entry, and then also inviting you to the Google Classroom with some of our week one assignments, uh, learning material, and also our course syllabus. Yeah, sweet. I'll hand it back to Jeff. Thank you. Hey. Uh, we have a question in the live stream that says, I've worked in Form Z, Cinema, 4D, and Maya, which have a steep learning curve. Blender looks more user-friendly. Is this so? Generally speaking, yes, Blender tends to be a little bit more user-friendly, but it does have a steep learning curve, especially if you're not used to 3D modeling software. Okay, let's begin with the quiz. And again, these questions are ungraded. They are here to help you learn. So which version of Blender are we using? 6.1, 2.79, 2.93 LTS, or 3.0? It looks like uh, you want to make sure that you click on A, B, C, or D. If you're having problems, uh, let me see if I can remove the stage blocker. 
Oh, never mind. It was done for me. For those of you in the live stream, definitely make sure to click on that quizzes.com link. That will take you to a new page. Make sure you open that up in a new tab. After you click on that, uh, that link, you can actually answer the questions within the web browser. All right, and in three, two, and one, the correct answer is C. Yes, beautifully done. We are using 2.93 LTS, and the reason why is because long-term support means that it will forever be supported by the Blender Foundation. It also has the most compatibility with multiple kinds of plugins, and in general, the uniformity is really good for teaching classes. We want to make sure that everybody understands the base functionality of Blender without being confused by the UI. It does change from version to version, so it's important to maintain a version that is the same across everyone. All right, let's move on to the next quiz question. So this has a little animation. That's what the A stands for. Blender is compatible with which operating system? Mac, Linux, Windows, or all of the above? If you are a Linux user, you might know of Ubuntu, also might know of Debian. Blender is available for every flavor of Linux. <sighs> kind of gave you guys a hint there. All right, and in three, two, and one, the correct answer is D. Yes, all of the above. Perfect. It is available for all versions of Macintosh, all versions of Linux, and all versions of Windows, but it's highly recommended that you use Windows 7 or higher, preferably Windows 10 or higher. All right. Uh, do we have any questions so far? I'm going to dismiss hand raises, and if you have a question, feel free to raise your hand. All right, emojis if everything is feeling good so far. Awesome. We do have a quick question. Uh, let's go with Angela. Hi, um, can you hear me okay? Perfectly. Okay. Um, I'm just curious, um, you showed us what the first project is, but what, how far will we be able to take this? Like, what should we be able to do as like, a, like once we get to the end of the course. Very good like question. What? Um, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Angela. Uh, the course will be teaching you how to do some basic 3D modeling. So we're going to be doing some box modeling. We'll be doing some plane, planar modeling or modeling from specific geometrical shapes. We will also be learning how to UV map and then do some basic texturing. So you should be able to create uh, some 3D models from scratch, capable for being uh, to capable for being put within an alt space world, a VR chat world, maybe even creating your own little game in Unity. Basically, the skill sets that would be uh, required to continue to advance your 3D modeling skills higher uh, as you continue to uh, to work with it. So basically, we're building our foundation. Uh, emojis. Oh wait, uh, Angela. I'll... All right. I was just curious. Will we be able to to do animations with it? Like, will it be, I I don't know if it's this is what it's called, but like a rigged. What they call a rigged. Yeah. Um, object. So <clears throat> rigs and animation are a advanced. Uh, are an advanced. Um, feature of Blender and 3D modeling, uh, actually 3D software. So we will not be learning how to do animation in this class, we'll be 
will we be learning how to do rigging? The reason why we're not doing this is because for a good foundation in understanding those aspects, you need to have an understanding of 3D modeling to begin with. So if you are creating characters so that you can rig and then animate, that will be done later. Uh, we're not going to be teaching you how to do this because it is a very advanced topic. We don't want to confuse you or lay on uh, too much information all at once. Modeling itself is its own skill set and it can take years to develop. Uh, rigging is its own skill set and animation is a completely different skill set. Uh, added to that, there's texturing, there's rendering, lighting, and so on and so forth. Uh, so we will not be learning those. We will only be learning how to do 3D modeling. All right, uh, we will take one more quick question. MSAL? Yes. Hi. Hi. Oh, you can hear me. Uh, I'm not able to select the quizzes. Am I supposed to hit the trigger? I'm, I'm in a VR experience finding this. Uh, yeah, so on the next quiz question, you will want to click A, B, C, or D uh, pertaining to the answer. And if you are still unable to click on that link, um, try, or, uh, sorry, not link, but on one of the, uh, the, the boards that are in front of you, one of the cards, try re-entering the space by going to the triangle menu in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, going to settings, and then re-enter and re-enter the event. All right, thank you, MSL. Yeah. All right, let's move sometimes, on to the. Oh, no, I was, actually, just sorry. Gonna, no, I was just gonna say sometimes the yellow highlight doesn't show up, but the way you'll be able to tell is that the the counter goes up when you click it. Um, so if you like enter the space twice, the yellow thing probably won't show up. But um, yeah, if the number does increase, usually that means your your vote would have been registered. Okay, back to you, Chris. Thank you. Uh, next quiz question. So Blender is what? Is it a game engine? Is it a video editing software, strictly a video editing software? Is it used to make juice? Or is it a modeling software with extra features? I do hope this time nobody selects C. I do understand it's very tempting. We're all thirsty in, in alt space. We're all looking to get some strawberry smoothie. I know I'm parched as well. All right, and in three, two, and one, our answer is D. Yes, it is a 3D modeling software with extra features. You can do other things like sculpting, rigging, animation, modeling, texturing, rendering, lighting, and even video editing, uh, compositing, for example. So Blender is designed to be a Swiss army knife. It is not particularly good in any sp specific thing, except that it is free and it is one robust tool. All right, let's move on to the next quiz question. How can you install Blender? Can you install it through Microsoft Store, Snap Store, Steam, and manually through the website? with a repair technician, with an installation disk, or with a zip file that we provide. For those of you that are uh, too young, installation disks used to be something that we would install software with. Back before the internet. All right, and in three, two, and one, the correct answer is A, yes. You will install it through one of those four locations. Steam is our preferred system to download through because it keeps your software updated automatically. All right, let's move on. And then we'll take a quick question after this. 
What is the outliner? A file that is used to keep track of objects, a mode that allows you to modify your scene, a window that displays all relative assets in the scene or outlines them, and or is it a tool that is used to highlight objects? We have somebody in the live stream chat reminiscing about when they had to install a particular software with about two dozen diskets. Incredible. Back then, everything would be stuck on two megabyte floppy disks. Imagine trying to download Call of Duty on two megabyte floppy disks. All right, and in three, two, and one, our answer is C. <clears throat> it is a window that displays all relative assets in the scene or outlines them. So uh, the outliner is the location in which you can find everything that is in your 3D modeling scene or animated scene that you can access by just clicking on those objects at any point in time. It's usually located in the top right-hand corner of Blender. You can obviously change the location of the different screens and windows that are located within Blender, but that is what it is. All right, let's move on. Oh, uh, let's take some questions. Anybody have any questions? Hand raises if you do. All right, looks like we're, we're doing pretty good so far, so let's we do have one question. Steven or Stefan. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Um, can I use Blender to create object that I can print out on my 3D printer? Absolutely. Yes, you can. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, uh, Blender can be used to create 3D printed objects. You can use any 3D modeling software to do this, but Blender being free is also the most easily accessible. You don't have to spend $2,000 on a piece of software that you rent for a year. All right, let's move on. So this has an animation as well. I think I forgot to play the animation earlier. I apologize about that. Uh, what is a modifier and how do you access it or where do you access it? Is a modification a modification uh, a modifier a modification to Blender through the add-on menu? Is it a block of code to modify a model in the scripting tab? Is it an asset that changes shape based on conditions found in the animation tab? Or is it a tool that temporarily changes your asset and is located in the modifier panel? We have a great question on the live stream. Somebody asks, can you can assets from Blender be used in Unity? And the answer is yes. Any 3D model that you create in Blender can be used and paired with any game engine that you're looking to use. So if it's Godot, Unreal Engine, Unity, you have full capability to move your 3D model from Blender into that particular game engine. All right, and in three, two, and one, the correct answer is D. Yes, it is a tool that temporarily changes your mod, uh, asset and is located in the modifier panel. Let's take a look at the animation or video. In Blender, modifiers are independent objects that we can assign to our 3D model that modifies the object at some level. One of these tools, for example, is the mirror modifier, which will allow us to immediately modify and mirror our object over a specific axis. 
What's also incredible about this is you can designate multiple axes. All right, emojis, if that finished playing for you. Awesome. As you probably noticed, that animation actually had 3D elements to it. All of those 3D elements were created in Blender and brought here in Alt, into AltSpace. AltSpace uses Unity Game Engine as a way to create this world that's around you. So all animations from here on out are going to be done in this kind of format where we have Blender in a 3D three-dimensional space that is accessible to you guys in AltSpace. All right, let's move on to the next quiz question. So where is a 3D viewport located in Blender? Is it the default camera location? Is it the 3D scene that is by default in the center of the screen? Is it a window that is opened by clicking on the 3D menu? Or is it a panel at the top right of the screen? I see a few people say that they're here because of 3D printing. Welcome. And those of you that are listening to this while you're in your car, please be careful. Definitely do not answer any quizzes while you're in the vehicle. All right, and the answer in three, two, and one is B. Yes. B. 3D viewport is the window that has your 3D assets visibly uh, located in the center of your screen. So that is where you have the little grid and any objects that you create or add to the scene, anything that you populate. Any 3D objects like a cube, a sphere, even a character is going to be in your 3D viewport. All right, emojis if that makes sense so far, and hand raises if you have any questions. All right, beautiful. Do we have any questions? We do. All right, phone sketch. Sketty, phone sketty. Uh, maybe it was an accidental uh, hand raise. I don't seem to be able to hear you, so uh, I'll take some questions from you later. All right. Let's move on. And just as a reminder, none of these questions are graded. These are only here for helping you to learn a little bit more about Blender before you actually jump into it. All right, so how do you access the UV editing tools? Do you press the X button at the top right of your, the right corner of your window? Do you click into the UV editing tab at the top of Blender? Do you click on the drop down menu named Edit? Or do you right click anywhere in the scene and select the pop up menu? All right, and in three, two, and one, the correct answer is B. Ooh, yeah, we got an overwhelming 50%. Fantastic, yes, yes, it's just that simple. In Blender, at the very top is a UV editing tab, and all you have to do is click into that, and you will be able to see two different windows. One is your UV editing window, and the other one is the 3D viewport. UVs stand for X, Y. They are there for 
laying out your 3D model in a 2D format. It's basically the opposite of origami. So you take a 3D object and you flatten it out into a piece of paper. All right, uh, emojis if that makes sense, hand raises if you have any questions. Awesome. Moving on. So how do you rotate the camera in the 3D scene? Now in the bottom left-hand corner of all of my videos, we will be showing the mouse. The mouse is usually the way to interact with the scene, usually. Just giving you guys a little bit of a hint. So how do you rotate the camera in your 3D scene? I'm just going to sit down here on this beautiful stage. All right. And in three, two, and one, the correct answer is A. Yes, you use your middle mouse button and you click and drag. By default, this is Blender's method of interacting with your scene and rotating around 3D objects. Okay, let's move on to the next quiz question. Then after this one, I will take some more questions if we have any. So how do you pan the camera in the 3D scene? Use the arrow keys. If you hold down shift and middle mouse, click and drag. You press W and then click and drag, or do you use the WASD keys? So for those of you who have touchpads, I also have tried using Blender with a touchpad. It is atrocious. You can do it, but it's very difficult. I highly recommend using a mouse and not a one button mouse. You might want to get two or three buttons. All right. And in three, two, and one, the correct answer is B. Yes. Overwhelming 50%. You hold down shift. You hit that middle mouse button and you click and drag around the scene. That is how you pan. Now, uh, a mouse, a good mouse, doesn't have to be some fancy gamer mouse. You can have a super simple basic HP mouse or a Dell mouse. It doesn't, uh, you don't need to have a special gamer mouse. All right. And let, before we do this question, there we go. Do we have any que uh, questions, any hand raises so far? Feel free to raise your hand. Uh, M, oh. <laughs> I saw what you did there, M Sal. All right, looks like we're good so far. Emojis, if, if you're feeling pretty confident so far. Awesome. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, let's move on to the next quiz question. So what's the best way to get quick help? Would it be our Discord, would it be email, Google Classroom, or the website chat box? Give you, you all just a little small little hint. It'd be the Discord chat application, snail mail, also possibly snail mail, or the website chat box, which is probably slower than snail mail. Three, two, 
three, two, and one. Yes, Discord. So we will have the Discord link set out to, uh, sent out to you all, uh, as Nicholas said, on, I believe it was Friday or Saturday. And when you are in Discord, you will have the ability to communicate directly with us and get immediate answers. You can also ping and talk to your fellow classmates. So in the case that somebody else can help you out, you can always get that feedback instantaneously. You can always get that assistance whenever you need. All right, let's move on. Uh, unless we have any quick uh, questions, hand raises. Does not look like it. All right, so where do you submit your work? Do you submit it via a private message to the instructor? you submit it to Google Classroom, you submit it via email, or the Discord application, chat application. Both the previous question and this question are very imperative to getting your work turned in. All right, and in three, two, and one, the correct answer is Google Classroom. Yes, just like being in a normal classroom, your homework gets turned into the instructor there. So if you want to turn in your homework, and you want me to grade it properly, make sure that you submit it to Google Classroom and we will have some videos up on our Discord and our Google Classroom location for you to help understand how to submit your work properly. All right, emojis and uh, hand raises if you have any questions. Awesome, awesome. I see a lot of smiles so far, so that's good. And that was it. You guys survived this uh, horrible interrogation of questions. Very happy you were able to uh, last through this. Thank you very much. Uh, and um, if you guys have any questions, definitely make sure to raise your hand. We're going to have a breakout session soon where we're all going to sit around in a cool looking world and network with each other. I also apologize for the clicky clicky. I have a mechanical keyboard. Okay, I'm gonna go Nicholas. here in a sec. I think people are awesome. having a hard time hearing my audio. Is everybody hearing me okay now? Bodies? Oh, awesome. Okay, I'm gonna stay here for now. I'm on my PC. That's why the audio is coming from a different source. Um, but uh, awesome. Okay, so what the plan is for what we need to cover uh, before we go into that breakout world? We go over the raffle winner. Um, I'm gonna go over a few logistic things, and then we're gonna go to the speed networking world where you're gonna be randomly matched with other students. Uh, and have a prompt. This is kind of like an icebreaker. You'll talk to them for a bit, uh, and then you're welcome to kind of break out and, and Jeff, ask Jeff any questions or come around and ask Kelsey or I any questions as well. Um, so a few logistics things. We're going to be sending out the recording of the class today uh, in that email. Again, we'll be sending out to everyone that entered their information there, as well as the invitation to the Google Classroom. Um, some things I want to mention about our program in general um, is that we also have the 3D modeling aspect and the VR development aspect. Uh, this is our first run of the 3D modeling course. Um, so this is our first run with Blender that we're doing. We've run about eight runs of the VR development pipeline already. We've seen a lot of success in the VR development pipeline. Um, one of the key stats we like to share is that the um, 
and this is actually courtesy of Oscar, who was one of our students mentioning this in the chat. Uh, the Oculus Launchpad program is one of the kind of uh, higher prestigious programs that's run by Meta, where they select 100 of the best developers across North America uh, to come in and receive training from uh, Meta staff. Uh, so they'll get a three-day boot camp, and then they'll get about three to four months of support afterwards. Uh, and at the end, uh, the team submit their work for a chance at five to $50,000 in grant funding. Uh, last year, we sent our students over there for the first time, and we represented 10% of all Oculus Launchpad recipients. As far as we know, this is the most out of any uh, live VR development program, so we're super proud about our students um, seeing success there. Uh, we've also had students from that VR development pipeline go on and get jobs at Supernatural, at uh, Walgreens, at Bad VR, Continuum, uh, Canvas VR, Engage XR. Um, so... We're now launching this new program, uh, Introduction 3D Modeling with Blender, to kind of uh, uh, increase the skill sets of our students. You know, they're not just going to only be VR developers, but they can kind of handle the more the programming aspect, but also learn how to model. And we're so glad to have Jeff kind of lead that. Um, Jeff was the instructor for our Introduction to Unity and C-Sharp programming course. Uh, for Jeff, I don't know how, how many times did you run that course? I believe I ate it. Uh, I <laughs> ran it seven times, seven or eight times. Seven, yeah, seven times. So just been running that course, and now um, is one of his great skills is 3D modeling as well. So we wanted to work with him and help him publish his own course. Um, so we're excited to kind of support him. Jeff's gonna be obviously leading this course and teaching it. Um, I think we briefly went over a big bit of a background on Jeff, but maybe Jeff, do you want to give him a kind of a full rundown? He's been leading our Intro to Unity course, which many of you know him for, uh, but he is a equally good, if not better, experience in 3D modeling. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Uh, I currently work as a senior pipeline engineer uh, for Nike. Occasionally, it is required of me to assist with 3D modeling or uh, experimenting with other parts of the art pipeline, uh, as well as experimenting with programming, mostly programming, though. Uh, my previous positions, uh, such as Nissan Automotive, uh, working with Ford, working with GM or uh, General Motors, uh, working with a company called 3D Excite. I have primarily provided 3D models and 3D assets to those sorts of companies where I create entire low poly versions of cars or medium poly versions of vehicles and also provide uh, interesting and exciting experiences within Unity and Unreal Engine for the military, uh, for Nike, and a few other companies as well. So my skill set is very broad. It's very range. I have done animation, 3D modeling, rendering, rigging, texturing, so on and so forth within Blender and Autodesk Maya. Maya is my bread and butter. So uh, for those of you who are transferring from another 3D skill set into this, it is actually very simple. It is uh, very fun. And some things that you'll learn from Blender is that it's not as terrible as it's been made out to be seen um, over the countless years. They've gotten a lot of funding over the past few years, and it's been getting better and better with each iteration that they've been pumping out. All right, so that's me, and uh, I'll be available in the icebreaker to chat. So if anybody wants to pick my brain about anything, I will be there to assist. All right. Thank you, Nick. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, and we're super glad to have him. Um, yeah, a lot of you guys probably know him from the intro class, so um, he's bringing that same type of enthusiasm to this class. So, yeah, we're really glad that he's going to be leading this course and teaching it. Um, awesome. I do also want to say that uh, we do have uh, scholarship options and also payment plans for the course. Uh, we are uh, kind of overrun with the scholarship submissions we see right now. So we do ask if you have received a scholarship, uh, to use it or let us know that you're not going to use it so we can free up a spot for other students. Uh, and we also have payment plans with a firm. So uh, if you'd like, you could spread the payment over three months, over six months, over 12 months. As long as you just click the pay over time button, you'll be able to get those options as well. Uh, and then, yeah, our policy is always once you take the course once, it's free forever. So that way you can always re-enroll in a future run. If this run you don't have enough time uh, or you want to come back, you know, take it to refresh and also get access to up-to-date information because we're continually uh, updating the videos to be more concurrent with the current Blender version or with the other courses, Unity version, 
uh, to make sure that it is um, staying uh, up to date. So, yeah, I think that's all I wanted to cover in terms of that. I think we can go on to our raffle winner for today. Uh, so the way this is going to work is when we call your name, you need to make sure to come up to the uh, bottom of the stage here. Uh, and then we could see your username and validate that's you. If you're on the live stream, you need to drop a comment in the chat saying that's me or I'm here. And we'll ask you to validate by sending us an email. But with that said, is everyone ready to do the raffle? Can we get an emoji drum roll, please? Emoji drum roll. Emojis, guys. Awesome. All right, let's go ahead and do it. And let's see. So the winner for the introduction to 3D modeling with Blender, of course, is Ziggy. Is Ziggy here? Again, if you're not here, we're going to go to the next person. So make sure to come down to the stage. Is Ziggy here? Not seeing Ziggy. All right. Again, if we don't see Ziggy, we're going to go to the next person. Last chance. Okay. All right. So Ziggy does not look like he's here. So we're going to call the next person. Again, you need to come down if you're here so we can see and validate that you're still present. So the next winner of the Introduction to 3D Modeling with Blender course is Lion's Belly. Or Lion Belly. Lion Belly. Hey, there he is. Awesome. Everyone give some emojis to Lion Belly. Emojis, everybody. Congratulations. We'll send an email after just following up. Awesome. Okay, but everyone's going to get an invitation to the Google Classroom with that week one uh, assignment and learning material as well as the course syllabus um, and recording from today as well. So Friday night is the enrollment deadline. Uh, it's $7.99 for the entire 11-week course it's on our website. We have scholarship options for those in need and also payment plans. Um, and you need to submit that by Friday night or else we're uh, in order to attend the rest of the class. So we're going to be trimming down the Google Classroom to those enrolled students on Saturday and then distributing the information to attend the class Sunday uh, after on Saturday. That way it's only going to be for those enrolled students. So. Uh, I hope you can join us in that next class and enjoy us on the full journey of learning to build in Blender. Uh, and I hope some of you can join us in learning how to develop in VR. Uh, one of the fun things we're hoping to do is combine kind of the skill sets we get from the VR app dev courses and the Blender courses. Uh, we have projects we do for the VR app dev pipeline um, and kind of sourcing some of the talent we get from the Blender pipeline with the ability to create 3D models with the programming talent uh, so they can create some really cool apps. Um, yeah, so we're super excited for that. I'm going to go ahead and drop a portal into our breakout world. Again, everyone's going to be randomly uh, configured into different groups and hopefully have a conversation with your peers. Uh, there'll be uh, kind of icebreaker questions around you to get the conversation started. And then just let it go and talk for maybe five, ten minutes. Uh, Jeff is going to be by the big bus, the big red bus. So um, if you have any questions, you can go up to him. But try and stay in your position at the beginning. Uh, if everyone's moving around, it's really not gonna work well. So, uh, any questions though? Questions before we jump off? Yeah, one guess, uh, thing just, yeah. oh, one thing to keep in mind, uh, you'll be teleporting into a big red spot. If you have nobody around you, you can always come over to the big red bus. But if you are in a big red spot and you are surrounded by other people, try to stay there as long as you can converse with your peers um that's that's it <laughs> awesome well, let's take some questions from the audience go to uh paul uh paul not able to hear hey. you or are you hearing him Chris? yeah he uh, just no said question hey. no question oh okay got it uh, Chris, do you want to take some questions? Sure. Uh, let's see. We have uh, Bruce. Bruce, Bruce. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Uh, my question is, if we paid for the pipeline, is this something completely separate from that? Or is this part of the VR pipeline-like bundle? So the VR 
pipeline bundle. Um, so that includes the four courses. Uh, so that's Intro to Unity, VR World, Advanced Unity Development, VR App Dev, and VR App Publishing. This is a separate course and a new course that we launched, uh, Introduction to 3D Modeling. So this is not included in the pipeline. But if you have taken that course already, um, there's an email we should have sent to you. You could also message me with a discount code for that universe community. So um, yeah, just send me a message. Um, yeah. All right. For future Thank courses, you. what we for future courses we give um, people that have already taken courses, like new ones we're launching, uh, a discount to the universe community, um, just to thank them for enrolling basically and being part of our community. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's go to other questions. All right. Let's uh, let's call on Norbert. Oh, sorry. I guess give you only my email because uh, I don't have any other information from you guys. And that was the reason I want to actually have information if it's possible. I have no question right now. Sorry. <laughs> oh, no worries. All right. Uh, and MSAL. All right. And those of you that are on, uh, on the live stream, feel free to post a question in the chat. And so. All right. All right. Maybe that was a misclick. All right, cool. Uh, we'll go to the breakout session, the icebreaker now. I'll uh, drop a portal, unless uh, Nick, you want to do that. Looks like it might have to be something you're going to do. Oh, looks like you. <laughs> you might have lost connection. All right, uh, I'm going to drop a a world point. We're going to go to the breakout session, and then uh, after that, um, oops, that's not the breakout session. We'll set up a portal here, and then would we? Uh, so go ahead and click on the little blue orb. If you're having a hard time clicking on it, come up a little bit closer uh, and then just go ahead and click on the orb. Once you have a line coming from you to the Blender breakout session two, uh, you don't have to click on it again. So once you have that line, leave it the, uh, where it's at. All right, I'm my bad. Oh, did you already drop the portal? I dropped a portal to the breakout session. So we'll go over yes, to the please. breakout session and then um, if we need to go to the other session, we'll go there. Yeah, and try and friend request the people around you. That way you could always portal to them if you get lost. Um, so friend request myself, friend request Jeff. Um, that way you could portal um, in case you don't get in through the portal here. All right, and in three, two, and one, we're launching. Hello, everybody. Make sure that you stay in your big red circle. I'm going to be over by the red bus. Definitely socialize with your classmates or soon to be classmates. Networking is a big factor of 3D modeling.
All right, so our first icebreaker question is, what are you excited about regarding the 3D modeling class and virtual reality? Yeah, uh, let's see. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and project some questions. Hopefully everyone stayed in their groups for a second. I'm seeing some people, make sure not to just clump together. Don't portal around, uh, try and find a group if you are solo. I'm gonna bring some questions on the big screen here. So let me know if you see them. One second. Oh, I'm gonna fly up a bit. Hello, everybody on the YouTube live stream. Come up. Hello, okay, so what, I'm going to go ahead and drop a question. Um, again, spend about three to five minutes conversing, and then Jeff's going to be by the big bus if you need any help there. But first question is, what is most exciting to you about the Metaverse? All right, so what is most exciting to you about the Metaverse? Um, we'll start there. I'll alternate another question in about five minutes. But please introduce yourselves uh, and share your thoughts. I'm gonna go off megaphone. All right, John, what excites you about the metaverse. <laughs> Everything. Is it this grass that's before you? I think the grass that's before me is uh, causing me to lag a bit. Well, I'll let you know that the grass that's before you is my favorite part of the metaverse because the once I get into it, I can bend over and touch grass. Hi, Ivano. I think we should go, go in this place. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm staying here in case anybody is a little bit lost or they need to, uh, or they don't have anybody uh, like no partners that they can uh, converse with. I'm also here to answer any questions. So uh, if you need anything, definitely feel free to uh, poke me or uh, I mean, yeah, we could always go over there. Give about, I'll give a little bit of extra time before Oops. I actually jump over there. I'm excited about immersive e-learning games. Uh, I don't know if you're, are you actually uh, live streaming this audio right now? Oh, oh my, aw. All right. <laughs> uh, hi, everybody on the live stream. Hi, Justin Lancaster. Nice to see you again. Yes. Uh, so I like to build a 3D model of a product and have people examine it in the metaverse. That is a fantastic option. You can totally do that. Amazingly, that is also an IRL feature. By the way, grass is a funny thing. 
Yeah. You, uh, yeah. If, if you want to touch grass, you have to look at it in just the right way in virtual reality so you can actually touch it. Yeah, it's, uh, so this grass is a card, uh, which means that they, it just sits in space and moves uh, perpendicularly to, or uh, parallel to your camera. I guess perpendicularly. I just uh, put this as foliage on the terrain painting and then just painted it on. It was like an actual item, but however the foliage works with the terrain painter, it took it and allowed me to do this. But that kind of behavior where it was always perpendicular to your camera was... All right, I'm going to over to some people that are spray. sitting... Oh. See, Dr. Onion is over here. About to join up with one of the largest groups that I see in this map. Hello, everybody. Speaking of hey, megaphone. how's it going? <laughs> it's going pretty well. How about yourself? Good. Awesome. Oh, there's more. We have more people. You you have followers. <laughs> uh, apparently, I do. Yes. Uh, we have Tony right here. He's the cameraman. So to say hey, hi, Tony. everybody. Wave to those that are in the cameraman YouTube. myself. So. <laughs> so, uh, do you have any ideas? Some of these questions that are up above. All right, are, I'm going to uh, drop a, a new more. icebreaker question for those that are. Any ideas what along. you want to build? Uh, so, do you have any ideas for what you want to build? Do you have so what do you want a 3D model to build? To learn animation. The person was asking the rigging. Also, if you look around now, you'll see it on the projectors. So I'm just gonna go with like the total nerd answer, and I want to model dragons. Oh, so. <laughs> all right. Nice. Hell yeah. Uh, I, I take it you dragon, so. might play Dungeons and Dragons. Yes, I've done it <laughs> once. As a friend of mine, I was in El Paso at the time, and was uh was I playing I think at the time it was not Baldur's Gate Divinity there we go Divinity 2 mm. and then he was like well if you like Divinity you might like Dungeons and Dragons so I just gave it a shot so I liked it it wasn't bad cool Divinity is a crazy game I played Very. Uh, one of them uh Commander, I think, is what it's called. You, get to fly you guys are geeking out on me pretty hard. <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good. I'm just, for, with Blender, uh, I just want to be able to build objects, customize objects, and bring them into Unity and um, do them um, so that when, in my experience, I can, can grab them and, and, and let go of them. And you know, apply a fix to them. Yeah. Uh, there was actually a game that I worked on with uh, Chelsea, who's behind you, uh, the person in the purple and pink shirt. Um, she's uh, one of my former students. Um, and we actually ended up creating a virtual reality uh, game that was based around uh, some therapy. Uh, our director, uh, Paula, Paula Way, um, was inspired by uh, you know, 
counselor sessions and such, we wanted to create a game that told this narrative story that you could interact with. So uh, you can definitely make 3D models and bring them into Unity or, or Unreal Engine, and you can totally make it for whatever experience you want uh, to interact with. And it's actually really good fun. So how many classes and, are in the course? So there are uh, 10 official sessions for this uh, particular course. You're going to be learning how to do 3D modeling and bringing it all the way up to uh, the, you're, you're going to have enough of a foundational skill set to be able to texture it, uh, the 3D model that you create, and bring it into your preferred game engine. Oh, quick question. Um, Chris, so, uh, so you, in Blender, and this is going to be a very novice question, that no that's where I'm going to be modeling the the three the 3D objects to bring into Unity, mm -hmm. like uh, rigging them, or no? Uh, no, so rigging is a completely separate topic. Um, rigging is the act of creating a controller and a skeleton for an object so that it can be animated. Um, I do that in Blender? Is, you can do that in Blender, but it is very difficult. It's oh. uh, definitely an advanced um, skill set. That's where I'm going to want to rig my 3D objects to bring into 3D? Uh, it depends on what you want to uh, do with your objects, but yes, if, if you want to have like a uh, like an animated character or like a vehicle that has wheels that can turn and hatches that open up and doors that open up, yes, you'll want to rig that uh, with a skeleton that you'll have to create from scratch, and then you can bring that into Unity uh, and then do what you wish while it, while it's in there. So we're not going to learn that in this course. Correct, uh, because it's just it, this is an introductory course. Um, we're <laughs> learning the foundational skill sets to actually do some of the things that you would do in Blender later on. Uh, but that is such a high-level skill set um, that it's something that I would not recommend a beginner do. It would probably make you never want to touch Blender ever again if you were to jump into it. <sighs> It's just something that I need to learn um, because even I can bring in 3D objects that I didn't make from scratch and rig them Blender, correct? Well, so what do you want to rig? That's my that's my question to you. Um, so for like a Unity, um, uh, for instance, we have a uh, like a Unity cooking app. You're making. Uh, Different recipes, and you um, one where we have we're doing it where you're smoking brisket, and so we have a 3D object that you know we had made, and we had to rig it so the door opens, or uh, you know, um, you have different recipes where you have like in ravioli, and you need to put them in a pan, and then they need to stick to the pan, and then you need to grab them with tongs. So with something like that, you actually don't need rigging. Uh, if you're opening up a door or if you're opening up uh, something that has a hinge, if you're not doing it physics-based, um, you might have to add a rig. So rig is uh, a rig is basically like the bone structures of your arm, for example, in real life. That is. Um, if you want to animate something so that you can swing your arm or animate it in a particular way or have individual uh, faceted joints, that's what rigging is for. But if you have got like a, a piece of ravioli or like a smoked brisket or a piece of bacon, or uh, maybe you've got a shoe or a car that is supposed to be sitting on a podium and just spinning around, you actually don't okay, need so, to rig that. Sorry, I want to just, uh, not to inter interrupt you, this is what my, this is what I need to know from my, my Nurse said, you need to get familiar with taking an asset into Blender 
getting the mesh textures right and export imported into Unity. Um, so it's really getting the mesh textures right for export import into Unity. And taking mm -hmm. the mesh asset into Unity and setting up colliders, sticky points, and exporting into an app that's available. Okay. Yeah, I mean, so that doesn't sound like so you actually need, need any reading. Oh, okay. So then I'm wrong. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So will I be so, able to, will this course help me do that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, hey. Of course, you probably want to learn <laughs> uh, the, the actual Unity aspect by taking the Introduction to Unity course. Um, but if you're just doing something that is uh, simple, like creating a 3D object, that's just 3D model. That, there's no rigging whatsoever. If you've got like a piece of cheesecake or something, uh, where it doesn't have like uh, a, an actual skeleton on the inside of it, um, then you don't actually need a rig, which is honestly way, Mesh way more. Textures is just, just adjusting the, the 3D objects. Uh, a mesh okay. texture is, well, mesh more simply, textures. a texture. Yeah, a mesh is the 3D model, and the texture is the image that's assigned to the 3D model. So actually, if you look down below at this ground, you can see that it has kind of a textural feel to it, AKA textures. And it itself is a 3D mesh. And if we take a look at this uh, cool jungle gym thing that's right here, it's composed of a whole bunch of different meshes. But the textures are incredibly simple. In fact, there are no textures, it's just material. <clears throat> I brought Thank things you. in uh, to alt space, you know, Blender, Unity, to alt space, but I haven't done animation yet. Mm -hmm. I know we're not going to be doing animation, but uh, is there any simple trick to, uh, or what's the trick to uh, bring in animation? I tried it before, but it was unsuccessful. So, what's the trick to bring in an animation into alt space? Yeah, from Blender. Mm, okay, so uh, if you're creating an animation in Blender, for example, let's say you have a bird uh, that maybe it maybe it doesn't actually have like flapping wings. Maybe it just kind of like moves from spot to spot, and it just kind of repeats yeah. that animation over and over again. Um, if it's just a solid object, you can add animation to it that basically puts it in one spot and moves it around in a circle or moves it to a series of points. And that animation can be then exported out from Unity into uh, alt space as a kit or as part of a world. Now, if you're doing something a little bit more involved, like maybe it's a, a bird that has wings that actually flap, and uh, move in, in a very specific particular way, uh, that animation might need some basic form of rigging, maybe it doesn't, um, but that animation you can do in Blender, bring it into Unity, make sure that it's tied up correctly, and then you can export it from Unity into the space. What do you mean tied up correctly? Uh, so in Unity, the animations that you have are based on where the 3D object or the animated object is located. So in Blender, you could have the animation happening uh, in one specific space in Blender, but it's not going to be anywhere specific in Unity, or it could be at point zero zero zero, which could be at the very center of the map. And that center of the map could actually be way below us right now. Um, so uh, what's really important is making sure that the animation that you have is instanced in a proper location. So in Unity, you can actually specify where it's going to be situated. And Unity is when the game engine in, that Alt Space uses. But I mean, when you bring it in as a to a kit in here, it doesn't really matter the location, right? 
Correct. I mean, uh, and the same thing goes for uh, when it goes into Unity. Basically, you just need to make sure that it's in a relative location. Okay. I'll probably try that in a while. Oh boy, there's some people here. <laughs> All right, um, I think we don't have too many more questions. Uh, unless, Moonchild, you might have something. Oh no, I'm good, thank you. I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. Uh, All the details will be in the email? Yes. Uh, and then we have a course syllabus in the classroom. Um, the first project is due uh, on at the end of this week. Uh, basically, the, the project is super simple. You take a 3D asset, uh, like a cube, or uh, maybe a sphere, something else that might exist in Blender. You add it to a scene, you submit that .blend file to, disk, uh, sorry, to Google Classroom. Make sure that you have an image, a, a screenshot of what you've done, as well as a screenshot of Blender 2.93, because that's the version that we're using. And then uh, just make sure that it's submitted there. You'll get full credit, and then uh, the actual coursework will really start to begin. Foundational <clears throat> skill sets will be uh, talked about. Okay, sounds good. Um, so the email there already, or should I expect it? Uh, you should expect it after class. Um, as long as you signed up for uh, that raffle, we now have your email, so we can send out the appropriate YouTube link to this uh, particular stream that has been happening uh, and is still happening at this point in time. And then you'll also get a link to the Google Classroom along with it. All right, cool. All right, I'm going to get going. Nice to meet you all. And, nice uh, meeting you, too. I'll see you next time. Uh, and then let's see. Somebody on the live stream says, tied up correctly. Uh, I was talking to someone who said earlier, who said, I wanted to add an object to an avatar already in Blender, but I need to make sure that they were tied together correctly. Is that something? So uh, if you're adding something to an avatar that's in Blender, so for example, let's say you take uh, av an alt space avatar and you bring it into uh, Blender. I don't know how you do that, but if you were able to, um, you can add like a hat or something to your character. And uh, in Unity, you'll have to make sure that you can actually parent the hat or a piece of clothing, piece of attire that you've generated in Blender to your character. So the actual work will happen within Unity. We're not going to be going over that. Um, but if you're doing something specifically in Blender uh, outside of Unity, that is relatively simple unless you're actually doing some uh, 3D modeling on top of the character. All right. Uh, all right. Well, I guess if we don't have any other questions, uh, I'll take off for the night. Um, all right. <laughs> I think we're all good. Cool. Yeah. Thanks. Looking forward to it. Excited to see you two in class. Have a good night. Likewise. All right. Uh, take care, everybody. See you, Shari. I didn't have to do this. I didn't have to do this. Okay. Oh. 
Am I, are we too late to the Hello. party? <laughs> That's awesome. For everybody. Hello. So, uh, Dr. Onion Kalima, let me introduce these amazing people who also are part of Universe team. This is Chelsea. Uh, like most people know Chelsea, so I'm, I don't know if I need to introduce hi, her. Hi, Chelsea. She's an amazing game. Hi. Yeah. And this is Tony. He is our star. He's the one who streamed our live today. And he's like a truly really amazing person. Yeah. Tony helped me out one time, I think. Pretty sure. Yeah, and that's our Discord. Uh, his Discord name is Sirnas. Uh, let me see what's our uh, yeah Sirnas. And uh, uh, he's also a great uh, game maker, like great programmer. He helps with the website, and he's probably going to teach uh, the introduction to Unity class soon. So yeah, and this is Dr. Onion. He's uh, and Kalima. I don't know. I'm, I feel like I'm introducing people who already know each other. <laughs> I think I've, hey, I mean, I've seen you guys' names, yeah. Yes. Also, yeah, I talked to Elise once and Tony, yeah, and Sirnas, maybe. I've seen you talking, you know, on the channels. Yep. Well, I'm Has excited for this class, but I'm all signed up. People freezing. Yeah, I'm waiting for others to pass. I can't Fairness. hear anybody else except Dr. Ami. Shari. Everybody's. Oh, Chelsea. Huh? Unmute. When he's on mute. Fairness. Okay, you're hurt. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Originally, um, I thought that I, I I couldn't figure out why it was adding asking me to join the class that I just finished the VR building class. Maybe that was in case somebody didn't finish. They wanted to take it again. That's why they sent you to send you another email. Join the classroom. That's why. Okay, yeah, well, I don't have any more. I think the class has already started. So I was like, hmm, I got all excited. I'm like, oh, shit. It's starting? I'm like, oh, but I didn't even know the name of the class. I, heard, I thought that was I thought that was number two. Or I thought it was, that was number three. <laughs> number two. Oh, advanced world building? Hmm. I, only, I only did world building so far, so... Like I thought, <laughs> like, uh, and then I responded to the email, but I never heard back. Maybe I'm sure if you ever got it, whether it's just an automated system, Chelsea. Um. So I typically go through and I uh, invite the people that I'm given a list of. Uh, depending on which session it is, it's uh, usually a combination of people who are currently taking the run, those who uh, are past students, although um, it's very possible from what I heard you describe, you said you've taken world building, but you haven't done advanced world building. I think the uh, name might have just been rearranged because it's uh, world building with advanced unity. Maybe that's what it was. I I might have just mixed mixed it up in my head. Yeah, it was the second class I took. Thought it was the third, but it, it turned out that I, it was the same exact name. Or so it was all kind of my own <clears throat> own fault. But thought it was something different. But 
Got it's it. nice that I have the option to retake the class too, you know, in case I felt like I needed it. I don't think I needed it, but. Yeah, of course. Uh, uh, usually if... past students will always get an email right when the next run's going to start. And then if you join the Google Classroom, of course, you'll get all the uh, Google Calendar invites for those classes. And things in VR Dev are changing cool. fast, so you know, in a year yeah. you might want to retake the class to learn Good the point. new things. And then we're going to have headgears coming out next year. And it's going to be a constant state of flux. Yep. Well, yeah, I'm excited to build some stuff. Scratch instead of Sketchfab. Sketchfab has so much, but just to make some, make things by myself, that'll be awesome. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that too. We're all gonna learn some really cool stuff. Have you already done the assignment due on Friday? I think it is Friday or Saturday. I didn't take the, I didn't, didn't, I wasn't able to join, so I didn't know, um, join the classroom, so I, I haven't looked. What is the homework? Uh, it's to open, or to install Blender, and then have one of the basic shapes in there. You get extra points if you modify it by adding, like, textures or materials. Like that. You can do that. Yeah. But I haven't yet. I haven't yet. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Gotta take care of the clothes in this room. Not tonight. It's gotta be done, okay? Yeah, I'm well, guys, I think I need to go get some food. So I'll have to talk to you guys later. Soon. All right. See you later. All right. Have a nice night. Good seeing you. Night. Nice. Good to meet you. Nice meeting your avatars in person. I think I'm going to take off too. I've got some evaluation.